Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote, and this is a Unify, or Ubiquiti Unify, US16-150. It's a 150 watt PoE, or power over ethernet switch, where all 16 ports are PoE. It also comes with two SFP ports, but they're limited to one gigabit. They're not the SFP, SFP Plus ports. This is an older uh, Unify switch, and you might be wondering why would you get the older version of the 16 port PoE switch? And the answer is because all 16 ports are powered, where the newer version, only eight of them are powered and it costs the same. So it seemed like a no brainer to grab this guy versus the other one. And you also have the, because it's an older version, you also have the option for 24 volt passive PoE on these, as well as uh, the 802. whatever AF PoE plus ports. So, all in, a much better, more versatile switch for the same price as what you pay for the newer layer 2 only uh, PoE plus switch. So, let's get this unboxed. Okay, so we have a user guide, we have a power cord, we have some rack mounting hardware, both here and here, because this is a rack mountable switch. I do like that it's not, that the ears here are not on the, the switch permanently, so you can take them off if you just wanna stack it up somewhere or put it in a closet that isn't a rack, so that's very nice. This little padding here. On the back, we have the power, a couple fans, and a console output. This is, as I mentioned, a 150 watt switch. It is an auto switching power supply, so you can, you can use it globally uh, with whatever cord. This is, a, I'm in the US, so this has a US power cord, but if you were to move or whatever. Um, as long as you change the power cord, it should work pretty much anywhere. In the front, we have our 16 ports and our two SFP ports, a reset switch, and then just a status indicator. This is not a power button, so it just turns blue. If you uh, <laughs> have it set to turn blue, I tend to leave these turned off because I don't need them lighting whatever place that they are but that's a configuration setting in the Unify controller. So that's pretty much all there is to the switch itself. If I was going to rack mount this, which I haven't decided yet, uh, these fit right here. You just use the little bolts to screw those on and then it fits in your rack just fine. So the next step is to get this powered up and set up in our Unify controller. So this is a new location, so we're gonna to have to set up the controller as well before we can adopt the switch. Just have to give it a name, say, yep, I agree. Gonna sign in with my Unify account. And of course I have two-factor auth set up, which, you know, y'all should too. We're gonna to adopt both the switch and I also have a Nano HD attached to that switch right now. So there are some reasons why you might not want to send your security and analytics data to Ubiquity. Uh, personally, I'm cool with that, but you need to make that decision on your own. I don't currently have a USG or Unify Security Gateway set up for this network. Eventually I will put one in place, but for now I don't. So we're just gonna run with what we have here. We can go to the devices and we can see that we have both our Unify switch and the Nano HD are set up and detected, and they're in the process of, up, this is probably updating firmware, and then the Nano HD is provisioning based on the SSID that we created earlier. Once the firmware is done updating, we will have a look at our port configuration because I generally wanna turn the power off on ports that shouldn't have power and set up some pro port profiles to make that managing that quite a bit easier. So our switch is done 
updating the firmware. So we can go ahead and select here and we can see the different ports. If we go to the port configuration, this is where you would manage the settings for each port. The default is for the port to have PoE Plus enabled. If you have a device that is using PoE Plus, you can see how much power it's using at that time. So this is our Nano HD, so we're gonna go ahead and name that Nano HD. It has the all port profile right now, but we're gonna go and create some port profiles and then assign them to this. I, I prefer to use all the profiles to manage it so I can just set all the, the profile to the port and have any, cha any future changes you make at the profile level instead of at the port level. So we're going to apply that so we can name the port so we can always know that port 2 is for the Nano HD. So we go to our settings, make that go small. Let's go to our profiles. So switch ports, there's uh, three that are by default, which is all disabled and LAN. LAN is the base network. In this case, our LAN network is not set properly, but it doesn't really matter right now because we're not using LAN because we don't have a USG. But we're going to edit this just to make sure that we don't forget later. And the network that it will be is 10.0.1.1. I have it set up so that it's pulling that network right now from the upstream network. But I want to set this up so that it, when we eventually plug it into a USG and adopt it, it provisions that USG with the correct network information and anything that we do from this point on just will work properly. So you can see here that a lot of this stuff requires a USG. But the, again, the reason why we're doing this now is so that we don't screw stuff up later. So before we get to our port profiles, let's create a couple networks. So let's set up a guest network so that we can isolate clients, client devices that should not be allowed to see other client devices. And we are just gonna start in the 2000 space with our VLANs. And this is going to be 10.0.2.1. So we're going to go 2002. 10.0.2.1 slash 24. Save. And then we're going to create a secondary network for semi trusted devices. And this will be a corporate network, but we just want to isolate it from the main LAN network. And then our final network will be our IoT network. So when we get around to actually adding, before we add IoT devices, we're going to create some firewall rules that will allow us to, devices not on this network, to reach into this network to talk to the devices there. But devices on this network will not be able to reach out to talk to devices on other networks in an unsolicited way. Okay, so let's create our port profiles. So we need a PoE port, port profile. So we want PoE, we want PoE plus. This will be all PoE. And this will be the one that we assign to our Nano HD. Say the native one is fine, select all and save it. One thing to note is that as you add networks, you will have to come back to this place and make sure that you check it. But one of the nice things about this is that as you add networks, if you don't check it, it doesn't propagate throughout the network like it would with the all, the default all network. So sometimes I'll use a VLAN only network, which creates something like a, a virtual patch cable so that you can connect two devices on either side of the network, but you might not want that network to be exposed over your access points to devices that can connect to it, uh, just for example. Actually, I forgot to do one network. We're gonna do one, uh, create a network for our cameras. And here we can, if we go back to our profile, we can see that our all PoE does not include cameras, which in this case is something that I want because I won't have I don't have any wireless I won't have any wireless cameras at the branch office. They'll all be wired cameras, so I don't want all of that camera traffic to be 
being sent to the uh, wireless access point, and I don't want other devices to potentially be able to, to get access to that uh, video feed. So let's go back to our switch and let's start messing around. So we want this guy. This is the upstream uplink. And we're okay with this having all. But we do not want PoE on this port because it will not it doesn't require that. So go ahead and apply that. We're going to go here to our nano HD. We are going to set it to the all PoE apply and then these two ports here this one is for the uh, file server and we only need it to see LAN and this one there's two Ethernet ports in the file server one of those ports the first one is bound to the the network adapter for the file server the second one is only going to be used by virtual machines which are hosted on that file server. So we're going to call this our VM LAN. And in this, this case, we need all because the different VLAN or the different VMs will use VM tagging or VLAN tagging at the network adapter level to assign the, the VMs to different networks. So we're going to leave that one as all but we also don't need PoE. The next ones, we're going to have cameras on those. And I forgot to create a camera profile. So let's go back here and create our profile. Switch port, add new port. We want PoE plus. This is for cameras. This should only be able to have camera networks. And so we don't actually need to select this because the native network is the camera network. Go ahead and save that, go back to our device, and then we're going to have six cameras total. So unfortunately, you can't just do this and then edit, because it only does the one. But, oops, we want custom. So that would have not been... It would have worked because PoE plus would have been turned on, but we want to just manage the PoE status using the profile. Apply. And just go through all of these and set the... So what we do with the other ports, that's kind of up for grabs. Uh, we can leave them the way that they are, or we can disable them so that if somebody were to wander over to the switch and just plug something in, they don't get access to the network. Of course, they can always unplug something and get access to the network, but that's one of the reasons why it's a good idea to not just do all, because then they would really only get access to whatever port they plugged into it. Obviously, if they plug into the right port, they get access to stuff, but it's something of a crapshoot with that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a, another port profile. That was weird. I'm just going to make another port profile that turns off PoE. Turns off PoE. And we will make the default for these isolation. Just for giggles. And so now if we select port 16, for example, and we set it to isolate no PoE, apply what should happen when it provisions is that PoE should turn off. Oh, there we go. Had to refresh the whole page to get it to turn off PoE. And now we can see that PoE is off. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for the rest of these. These um, You don't need to watch that. One thing I wanted to show before finishing up here is where you would turn off the light. Because I don't like the light. And it turns out it's right here in sight. So you just turn off enable status LED screen. Then go down to the bottom and apply changes. And you can't see it because I don't have a camera on the uh, switches and the Nano HD, but the light just turned off. 
So that, that's pretty much all there is to, to setting it up. I will do some throughput testing with the switch just to see how some iperf numbers, how iperf numbers look on it. But um, given the specs of the switch, it, I mean, it's an enterprise switch. It should just work great for that. The last thing to note is that the US 16 150 watt switch pulls about 17 watts at idle. Uh, the total power, power consumption will, of course, depend on how many PoE devices, whether that's PoE Plus or 24V passive that you've connected to it with, you know, the, the number ramping up based on that. But the, the baseline for the switch is about 17 watts. Uh, hopefully you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Cheers.